simple sequence. And so that's what he did. And this just shows you the, the first few rows that you get. So the numbers that we're counting here in the nth row, uh, the kth term across, is the number of n by n alternating sine matrices with a 1 in row n column k. So that's your, you're missing that k from the second row from the bottom in the monotone triangle, uh, which means effectively you've got a 1 in the bottom row, the kth position of your alternating sine matrix. And so Dave Robbins started to look at, at this arrangement and see if, if anything nice was, was going on. Uh, one observation that you make quite quickly is that if you add up the entries in any row, it's always equal to the first entry in the next row. So the, the total number of 5 by 5 alternating sine matrices is equal to the number of 6 by 6 alternating sine matrices that have a 1 in the lower left-hand corner. And if you think about it, it's not hard to see why that's true. Because I've got, if I've got a 1 in the lower left-hand corner, the rest of the bottom row has to be zeros. The rest of that column has to be zeros. And so the number of alternating sign matrices is just the number of alternating sign matrices of one smaller size. So the first number in each row is the sum of the entries in the row above it. Well, you look at these for a while and you see other patterns. Uh, looking at the first two entries in each row, 1, 1, 2, 3, 7, 14. Uh, 42 is two-fifths of 105, and 429 is a third of 1287. So you've got nice ratios coming up here, and it's easy to predict what's going to happen to those ratios. Well, what about the other ratios? Well, if, if you fill them in, uh, this is what you get. Of course, 14 to 14, there are lots of ways of representing that ratio. Turns out the right way to represent it is as 5 to 5. Um, but what's going on here, if you look at the ratios, uh, you see a remarkable pattern, uh, thinking about Pascal's triangle, where you go diagonally above 7 ninths sits between 2 fourths and 5 fifths. You just add 2 fourths and 5 fifths the way you might want to add 2 fourths and 5 fifths. Add the numerators, add the denominators, and that gives you the next fraction. And the, the big point that I made when I wrote my book was Dave Robbins saw this pattern of these ratios. He continued this through 20 rows, and that pattern held up. He knew he had discovered a mathematical fact. He knew that, in fact, he could predict what this ratio would be between any pair of adjacent entries in this table. There was no question about what was happening. The question was, why was it happening? How can we prove it? Not because anybody had any doubt about it, but because we had no idea what this meant, how it related to anything else in mathematics. And the big point that I make in my book, the reason that I call it proofs and confirmations, is that Sometimes mathematicians prove things in order to be able to establish that they're true. But very often, mathematicians prove things that they already know have to be true. The question is, how do these results connect to the rest of the mathematics that we know? And that's really what this was all about. There was no question what these ratios had to be. The question is, where did that come from? How did it connect with the rest of the mathematics? And that's the fascinating story is working out what the connections are. Um, of course, once you know what these ratios are, if you know the first entry in any row and you know the ratios, that uniquely determines the rest of the entries in that row. So knowing that you're starting out, there is a single one by one alternating sign matrix. And knowing what the rules are for the ratios, that uniquely determines all of the entries in, in this table. Um, incidentally, because these ratios are the sum, the numerator is the sum of the two numerators above, the denominator is the sum of the two denominators above, that suggests that the numerators and denominators are really just binomial coefficients, and you play around with it for a little bit, and you fairly quickly see that the ratio of consecutive terms is given by, by this ratio, sum of these binomial coefficients divided by the sum of those binomial coefficients. 
And once you know what the ratios are, you can find an explicit formula for these a n k, uh, the kth entry in, in the nth row, um, and it turns out to be given by this explicit formula. It's just some simple hypergeometric series identities give you that. And then as the special case, uh, a n is the first entry in the n plus first row, and you can see that that's equal to this rational product of, of factorials. So these became um, Dave Robbins' conjectures. Uh, he discovered these in 1980, and uh, he disseminated them. Almost immediately, people began to find connections, uh, connections to problems in plane partitions. And I talk a lot about that in, 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 my, in my book. That's one of the, the main themes there, so I'm not going to go into that here. Uh, if you want, I'll be glad to give another talk sometime or, or read my book. Uh, what I really want to get into is, is what's been happening since that book. But these are the two big conjectures. Um, and the first real progress on these was made in 1992, uh, when George Andrews actually proved a related conjecture uh, that this rational product of factorials could be used to count the number of totally symmetric self-complementary plane partitions in an n by n by n box. So if, if we think of these as cubes that are being piled into this box, what we want are arrangements of these cubes uh, that are symmetric on all of the symmetries of the axes, so rotation of the axes or reflection, and it's also self-complementary in the sense that if you look at the cubes that are not there in that box, uh, they are precisely another copy of the cubes that are there. So, so the complement, the set of cubes that are not there exactly matches the set of cubes that, that are there. And uh, Dave Robbins had conjectured that the formula for counting these was exactly the same as the formula for counting alternating sign matrices. George Andrews proved that in 1992, and then uh, Duron uh, picked that up and was able to build it into a proof of the alternating sign matrix conjecture. Uh, it finally appeared in, in 1996. It proved that this is the correct formula for counting the number of n by n alternating sign matrices, but it wasn't able to prove the initial conjecture. Uh, that this, the, the ratios of consecutive terms in that triangle of values, what's known as the refined alternating sign matrix conjecture. But that conjecture fell fairly quickly after that. One of the important connections that came up uh, also appeared in 1996. Uh, this is due to Greg Cooperberg, uh, who announced another proof of the alternating sign matrix conjecture. And what, what Greg revealed is that physicists actually had been studying alternating sign matrices for decades, only they had called them the six vertex model. So I want to talk a little bit about the six vertex model. And that's really going back to this representation of an alternating sign matrix as a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, what we can actually do, and what the physicists do, is, is to consider a directed graph on a square grid so that at each vertex you've got two in edges and two out edges. It's called the six vertex model because there are four choose two equals six possible ways of choosing which will be the in edges and which will be the n edges uh, at each of these vertices. And uh, the other restriction is the boundary condition, which exactly matches this, that you've got in arrows from the left and from the right, and you've got out arrows at the, at the top and at the bottom. And so the number of alternating sign matrices is just the number of six vertex models, these directed graphs, with these particular boundary conditions. And the physicists had been studying these six vertex models for quite a while. Um, the physicists weren't interested in the particular boundary conditions that arise in connection with the alternating sign matrices, which is one of the reasons that the connection had not been made before that. Uh, but they were interested in these directed graphs on a square grid um, in which you do have two